flows. Fulfillment happens at three levels. In any relationship, the moment one takes the extreme position, the relationship begins to crumble and is finally destroyed. This happens because there is no centering and each operates through the false egocentric centers. As long as one does not discover the existential center, one will continue to operate through egocentric or conditioned centers. For fruition or season of spring to arrive in any relationship, one has to take the middle path, a path that evolves out of the existential center as a result of this, harmony and bliss is experienced. One can relate with anyone and whatsoever and whosoever you start relating or relate with awareness, life will start blossoming out of the season. Such is the nature of awakening. Such is the nature of awakening. The inner quality of an awakened one remains the same when he meets an emperor and when he meets a beggar. The Buddha is the same. He has the same inner quality while meeting a beggar or an emperor. He is not different. Instead, he is the same. The beggar is not nobody and the emperor is not somebody. And really, while meeting a Buddha, emperors have felt like beggars and beggars have felt like emperors. The touch, the man, the quality remains the same. When Buddha was alive, Every day in the morning, he would say to his disciples, If you have to ask anything, ask. The day he was dying, that morning it was the same. He called his disciples, the monks, and said, Now if you want to ask anything, you can ask. And remember, what Remember that this is the last morning. Before this day ends, I will be no more. He was the same. That was his daily question in the morning. He was the same. The day was the last, but he was same, unchanged, unaffected. Just as any other day, he said, Okay, if you have to ask anything, you can ask, but this is the last day. There was no change of tone, but the monks began to cry. They forget to ask the question. Buddha said, Why are you crying? If you would have wept on another day, it would have been okay. But this is the last day. By evening, I will be no more. So do not waste time in crying. Another day, it would have been okay. You could have wasted time. But do not waste your time in crying now. Why are you crying? Ask if you have any question. He was the same in life and death. The self-actualized person is always at ease whatsoever be the circumstance or situation. Life and death are the same. Bliss and harmony are the same. Nothing disturbs him. Nothing dislocates him from his home. From his centeredness, 
to such a person you cannot add anything and at the same time you cannot take anything away from him. You cannot add anything to him. He is fulfilled. His every breath is a fulfilled breath, silent and blissful. He has attained. He has attained to existence, to being. He has followed, he has flowered, blossomed as a total man. This is not a partial flowering. Buddha is not a great poet. Of course, whatsoever he says is poetry. He is not a poet at all, but even when he moves, walks, it is a poetry. Every aspect of life is poetic. He is not a painter. What, whenever he speaks, whatsoever he sees becomes a painting. He is not a musician, but his whole being is music par excellence. The man as the man as a totality has blossomed. So now whatsoever he is doing are not when he is sitting in silence or doing anything even in silence his presence works. Even in silence in his absence the subtle presence works it becomes creative. It sows it in his absence, in his subtle presence, you experience moments of creativity. Tantra is concerned not with partial growth, it is concerned with you as a total being. So three things are basic. You must be centered, you must be rooted and balanced. That is always in the middle, of course. Without any effort, you are centered, you are rooted and you are balanced. If there is an effort, that means you are not balanced. And you must be at ease, at ease in the universe, at home in the existence and then many things follow. This is a basic need because unless this need is fulfilled, you are a man only in name. You are a man as a potentiality, but you are not the actually a man. You can be, you have the potentiality, but the potentiality has to make has to be made actual. If it is natural phenomena to be joyful and to live a fulfilled life, then clearly we are doing something. But how does watching lead to no mind? One is more and more able to watch one's body, one's thoughts, and feelings. But this feels beautiful. But the moment of no thought are few and far in between. It seems easy to understand meditation is witnessing. I but but it does not sound easy at all to understand no mind. This has to be understood. Journey begins when meditation becomes witnessing. Remember medi meditation covers a long pilgrimage. When I say meditation is witnessing, it is the beginning of meditation. And when I say meditation is no mind, it is the completion of the pilgrimage. You have started the pilgrimage from through at the point witnessing 
and it ends up when you attain to no mind. It is the completion of witness of pilgrimage. Witnessing is the beginning and no mind is the fulfillment. Witnessing is the method to reach to the state of no mind. Naturally you will feel witnessing is easier, it is close to you. Indeed, witnessing is the only like a seed and then is the long waiting period. Not only waiting, but trusting that seed is going to sprout, that it is going to become a bush. Then one day the spring will come and the bush will have flowers. No mind is the last stage of flowering. No mind is the last stage of flowering. Sowing the seed is of course very easy. It is within your hands, but bringing the flowers is beyond you. You can prepare the entire ground, the soil, but the flowers will come on their own accord. You cannot manage or manage to force them to come. The spring is beyond your reach, but your preparation is perfect. A spring comes, but if your preparation is perfect, a spring will come. That is absolutely guaranteed. It is perfectly good the way you are moving. Witnessing is the path and you are starting to feel once in a while, while a thoughtless moment, a moment when there are no thoughts. These are glimpses of no mind, but just only for a moment. Remember one fundamental law that which can exist just for a moment can also become eternal. They remember this fundamental law that which can exist for a single moment can also become eternal. You are not given two moments together, all, but always one moment. If you can transform this moment into thoughtless, into thoughtless state, you are learning the secret. Then there is no hindrance, no reason why you cannot change the second moment which will also come alone as a single moment with the same potential and the same capacity each moment comes separate but with the same potentiality and same capacity to become a moment of eternity each moment is total in itself, qualitatively, just as each drop is contains the total quality. Qualitatively, it is same as the ocean, as the water in the ocean, but it is simply a drop. So, each moment comes to you with potential, same potential and same capacity. Enough for now.